There are goals, and there are dreams. But when those dreams are tested and time becomes a factor, how far would you go? Finding something out like that, it was um, devastating, I, I think, to say the least. And you get hit with all these emotions all at once. And, and I think the biggest thing is it's a loss of control. I'm a pro athlete, I'm used to having control over everything in my life, and all of a sudden that control is ripped out of your hands and replaced with a doctor who's essentially giving you a battle plan to save your life. And all this happened a week before the biggest meet of my life. June 19th, 2008. A week before U.S. swimming trials for the Beijing Olympics, Chanteau was diagnosed with testicular cancer. Shocked by the news from his doctor, a decision needed to be made. Does he have surgery right away or forgo treatment and continue his Olympic dreams? After I explain the position I was in, I was able to go on to Olympic trials and, and compete and actually make the Olympic team. Um, you know, then I was faced with an even bigger decision and that was uh, if I could continue to delay treatment and go on and represent the U.S. at the Olympic Games. And after uh, consulting with my then army of doctors and, and going through a battery of tests, uh, they gave me the go-ahead to compete at the Olympics and it was it was an experience of a lifetime, you know, it's something that uh, I worked my entire life to do and, and uh, stepping foot on that deck for the first time in Beijing, I'll, I'll definitely never forget that. While competing in Beijing, Shanto set a new personal best in the 200 meter breaststroke. He returned to the US after the games and underwent surgery in late August, only to find himself back in the pool three weeks later. All that he'd been through inspired him to create his own Live Strong Cancer Awareness event called Swim For Your Life. As you can imagine, his story traveled quickly. Being a, a six-time cancer survivor myself, um, I had heard uh, Eric's story with testicular cancer and, and the Olympics, and, and when we heard about the event here two years ago, um, I got to meet him at the dinner the night before the meet, or the event. And, um, and so we talked afterwards, and, and that's when my wife and I kind of got engaged with Eric to help him uh, coordinate and promote the event uh, the second year. When I got back from uh, the Olympics and had surgery, I got back home to Austin, went in to meet everyone at Livestrong, and the first thing the CEO, Doug Ullman, asked me was, is there anything else we could do? And I said, absolutely, I want to meet Lance. So they set that up a couple weeks later. A uh, big group of us went out to dinner, and, and that was the first time I got to meet uh, Lance, and we didn't talk anything about cancer or anything like that. You know, it was just, it was a pretty incredible experience to meet an athlete uh, that has accomplished what Lance has. So, um, after I, I met him, I went to uh, my first Livestrong Challenge. About two years after that, we started um, the first Swim For Your Life event in Atlanta, Georgia. We actually hold it at Lake Lanier, which is where uh, I grew up going to the lake. And um, we had probably 75 people come out the first year in 2010. And then um, last year, we had over 300 people participate. So it's an event that has really taken off very quickly. And um, you know, I try and, and run it kind of like a Livestrong Challenge, just in the water. Um, and the, the goal is to continue to grow it and, and to continue to, uh, to, to be involved with it. You know, as long as there's a fight against cancer, it's something that I want to be involved with. Chanteau began checking in with his doctor every two months after surgery, then every four months. Now the Olympian only visits every six months. And while his life of normalcy continues to grow, so does Swim For Your Life. The expansion in the participation last year was enormous. And, uh, and I think we can do double that this year, especially with the Olympics, uh, especially when he gets on the team, and especially when he does so well over there, which we all are, are hoping and praying for. Um, it, it, it can be spectacular. It's a great event for a lot of reasons, and, and first and foremost, the benefit and the uh, awareness we raise for the cancer community. Um, you know, all the funds we raise go towards the Patient Navigation Center and the other programs and services that Live Strong has. And at the same time, you know, I think awareness is the biggest weapon we have in the fight against cancer. Against cancer. So, it's simply having people out there and acknowledging um, that they need to be aware of their bodies not just for testicular cancer, but all types of cancers, um, is, is something that is very, very valuable. The mission of this has been always to give back the support that was given to me when I was going through this. Uh, 
at Olympic trials and at the Olympic Games. You know, during that summer of 2008, I was given so much help and so much support by people that I had never met before. And, you know, I, that was part of the reason why I started this, was to be able to, in some way, give back to people who I don't know who will at some point go through this or have a loved one or know someone that will go through this and show them the support that, that was given to me. Through his struggles, Shanto has learned to embrace the life he graciously still has. He's learned that there is more to life than the sport of swimming, and that awareness of this disease can change lives, one event at a time. For Ball State at the Games, I'm Josh Blessing.